This is my Toshiba L750D notebook computer. I've had this thing since September and I've been wanting to make a video about it since September, but I never really got around to it, because I was basically using it a lot for school, because I really need this for university. Because <laughs> it's quite a little powerhouse for the price. So it's a 15.6 inch notebook computer, like, well, pretty much anyone, any of these notebooks these days. Anything smaller is not really good because they have usually have bad screens and bigger is just too big for me to fit in my bag so I can't take it with me so let's get to the ports on the sides this is the right hand side of the computer it has two USB ports shoot for a modem and this is the DVD burner on the back there's just the battery and the screen hinges if you go to the other side we can clearly see a Kensington lock, the vent that uh, puts all the air out. Here's the Ethernet gigabit, of course. VGA, another USB port, and HDMI, and microphone and headphone jacks. Alright. On the front of the machine, we have indicator lights over here. And there's an SD card slot. And that's it. If we open up the computer, it's got a nice full-size keyboard. It's all chiclet style, but this thing types quite well, I must say. There's a speaker over here, speaker over here, Toshiba logo there, power button. There are a bunch of stickers, A8, Fission, Quad core with major HD graphic, Windows 7, NG Star, whatever, certifications. This is a very interesting touchpad because the whole finish of this laptop, as you can see, is glossy. So is the screen for that matter, it's all glossy. Which I usually don't like, but you know, for the prices and the, the term of performance this thing puts out, it's most definitely worth it. So. The touchpad is just, you know, everything here is glossy, and then you've got this rough patch here as the touchpad. It works really well. And, uh, well, the buttons are quite sturdy. You can already hear that this left one has been used more than the right one. Much lighter click to it. But that's uh, to be expected, I guess. I rarely use this with a mouse. I think I should, though. So this is the screen. It's very nice. And, uh, well, I guess it's time to just power it on and see what it's got. Let me press the button. Right. <clears throat> My bad. Okay, something is happening. Continue to buy us. Okay, so it's got an AMD A8 3820 APU with Radeon HD graphics. So it's an A8 3520M 1.6 GHz quad-core processor. That's 8 gigs of RAM. Let's see what we got here. Nothing interesting. I've got a CPU frequency mode on dynamic switching, so uh, it won't run at the full 1.6 or the turbo mode 2.5 all the time. So that would, uh, you know, put out quite a bit more heat. Uh, SATA, some performance, whatever. Also has a 750 gig hard drive made by Toshiba, which is basically Hitachi as far as I've known. But, um, let's just discard to change and reboot. That's better. Alrighty. Pick an OS. Well, we're gonna go with Windows 7. Don't need Ubuntu for these purposes. I'm actually going to replace the uh, optical drive with a uh, hard drive caddy, so I'm going to put an SSD in the main slot of this thing where now the hard drive is re residing, I guess I should say, and then I can actually put uh, another two and a half inch laptop drive, or well the six or the 750 gig that's in there now, I can just put that in there and then I've got a lot more storage and a lot more performance. Alrighty.
takes a little while to boot up. I've got a lot of stuff installed and startup programs that I need, so... This thing is most definitely being used. And the battery is down to 37%, I see. Hmm, doesn't matter. It is quite a powerful machine, nevertheless. It's another reason why I might want the SSD in here pretty soon. Just to get that performance win at uh, the startup. I'll start that up in the background. I'm waiting for it to catch up with all the startup programs running in the background and starting up, so... As soon as it's up and running, it's, it's quite a little zippy machine. Still thinking about it. 7.47 gigs usable of the 8 gigs of memory, because 512 megs, or actually 520 megs, are being used by the built-in graphics in the CPU, because it's an APU. It has built-in radio graphics, in this case it's the 6620G. But this thing doesn't have just one graphics processor, it has two. This is the Experience Index 5.3 for the integrated graphics. So that's just the integrated GPU. It does not calculate uh, SLI or Crossfire for some reason. Maybe it's been like that always. I don't know. I've never had a dual GPU configuration in any computer, let alone a laptop. <laughs> um, okay, let's go to the device manager. If it will let me, but the hard drive is still. Yeah. This hard drive is actually quite, getting quite slow at the moment. Uh, but, uh, need some maintenance. Um, Bluetooth is not properly working, but I don't care. There we go. Four cores of the CPU there. There are the two graphics processors, the HD 6620G and the 7450M, which has one gig of DDR3 frame buffer. And that one is just using the DDR3 from the from the PC itself. I might actually upgrade that to a faster speed so the speed of this whole, uh, of the whole graphics subsystem will actually increase. It's an idea. I might uh, stuff 1866 in here. It is supported, so why not, right? But only when I really need it. Uh, so I just closed ADA64, I see, okay. Uh, let's see, let's get to uh, do the sensors here. It's not really putting out that much heat. Everything is about 36 degrees Celsius at the moment, idling around. Hard drive is nice and cool. It's running at 800 megahertz, I can see, because the CPU V core is under 1 volt. It's at uh, 0 0.9 at the moment. Same for the GPU core. So it's nice and and why the hell do I keep closing it? I want to show you benchmarks here. <clears throat> I'll just put in high performance so nothing will get compromised there. Let's see. Let's take a look at the memory here. Memory benchmark. Okay, in terms of memory, memory benchmark, it... Uh, Scores quite well. Somewhere around the lines of other decent quad core CPUs like the, the like Quattro Quad Extremes and stuff. It currently clocked itself up to a DDR3 1700, so this memory is quite dynamic as well. And then just grab a CPU Queen benchmark here. This would really give us an idea what in terms of speed. Okay, there we go. A twenty eight for the graph twenty scores thirteen thousand three hundred and seven. 
That's better than a core to duo extreme and about equal to a Phenom 2 X4 9500, which is a 2.2 GHz desktop quad core, which puts out quite a bit more heat and wattage. So this is quite a capable machine. It's by no means an i7 or an i or an i5 for that matter, but you know, it's still it's still pretty good. It has good horsepower in terms of CPU speed and, well, most importantly, graphics speed. Because I do use that every now and then, and uh, it's good to have as a backup because the graphics chip will relieve pressure from your CPU when running more intense tasks, even video and stuff. So. And that's what I do watch on this uh, every now and then, so it's good that it uh, is all fine and dandy. So as a last slide, I'm just going to show CPU-Z, and then uh, we're going to conclude this video. So as you can see there, it's dynamically switching between 800 and 2.5 gigahertz. Default speed of this max speed would be 1.6 gigahertz. It has 4 megs of level 2 cache. Gigs of DDR3 running in 1333 natively, and the graphics which aren't properly detected by CPU Z. So, there you have it. Time to shut her down and get some charge in it. Windows 7 Home Premium 64 bit, switch pick one. By the way, this is just a custom login screen. I put it up there because I liked it, sort of. All right, and that concludes the video on a Toshiba Satellite L750D. Hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you for watching.